Hi, I'm Charlotte Connolly and I'm the Museum Curator at the Polar Museum and today I'm going to be talking to you about an artwork in our collection as part of the Museum Remix Unheard project. So the artwork I've chosen is a portrait of a woman, an Inuit woman called Kanguagyu that was made in the 1830s and uh, I've chosen it for two reasons really as part of the Unheard theme. Uh, one is to do with how that portrait was made, by whom, and the kind of uh, power structures, I guess, behind that. And the second is because of what it depicts. And particularly when I say that, it depicts an Inuit woman with face tattoos. So let me unpack those two a little bit for you. The first, how it was made, when it was made, and who it was made by. Um, it's one of a fairly large collection of watercolours we have in our collection by John Ross, who travelled to the Arctic in the 19th century. Um, he painted all sorts of things, um, but in among the things he painted were quite a lot of portraits of the Inuit people they came across. And not only did he paint portraits, but he wrote about them in his narrative of a second voyage to the Arctic. So we know a surprising amount about these people that he came across. And what we know about Kangyuagyu is that she was certainly above 60. She was of middle size, though rather corpulent. Her hair was grey and her face was much wrinkled as well as tattooed. Um, and he wrote about his other subjects. And actually, it's not just that kind of bullet pointy factual information. It's part of a narrative. So we also have a portrait of her husband and we know a bit about them and their family relationships, um, some of their skills, um, all told through the writing of John Ross. And so on the face of it, we actually know a remarkable amount about these Inuit people, um, more than perhaps you would from other expeditions where they weren't recorded in, with so much care and so much detail. But on the other hand, it's still part of that expedition that was kind of presented as a scientific expedition that was going to map the coastlines and understand shipping lanes and all the implications of that. Um, and we know exactly when that expedition came across Inuit people because they kept ship's logs, they recorded the weather and other meteorological things in their kind of scientific logbooks. And in the remarks of that logbook, they noted down when they saw indigenous people. So they're part of that kind of um, act of doing uh, science in the period of empire, science exploration and expansion. It's all very much tied together. Um, and other things we have in the collection include uh, a painting of some Inuit people alongside the ship's officers looking at maps, so showing them kind of contributing to the expedition activities in some way. Um, we also have paintings of them on the ice and one of the Inuit people appears to be holding a bit of paper, so again uh, potentially contributing in some way. And we have some drawings by Inuit people from uh, expeditions of the period where they were given a paper and some pencil and asked to draw their own things, whatever they fancied, and those made it back to the UK. So in some respects we have um, pictures of what the Inuit people at the time were doing and what they, their contributions to the collection, but all very much framed through the lens of um, the way those Western European explorers worked and what they did. What we don't have in the collection is the oral testimony, which is um, the, the kind of way that uh, memories are passed down through Inuit culture is through oral uh, testimony and oral histories. Um, so there's a bit of an imbalance there in what we have in the collection, um, which would be interesting to explore. The other thing that I mentioned is that this portrait depicts a woman who was tattooed, and that is interesting as well. Um, in the 20th century, particularly around the 1950s, um, the Canadian Inuit were colonised and lots of things happened during that period of colonisation that were traumatic for that community. Um, they were previously a fairly nomadic society and they were forced to settle. Um, the children were put into residential schools and um, many of their traditions and ways of life were outlawed. Um, and tattoos were part of that. Their belief systems and their language were also part of that. Um, and a few years ago, there was a film made called Tunit, uh, retracing the lines of Inuit tattoos, which was part of a, 
a movement really to reclaim that act of tattooing. And that's happening now. Inuit women are starting to uh, tattoo their faces in the traditional ways again. So um, this painting offers an opportunity to explore some of that. I think this is um, also part, I mean, the painting is made as part of the act of colonization, right? So, okay, the, the part where they stop being allowed to tattoo themselves doesn't come until the 1950s, but it's all part of the same process. Um, so I'm interested to see what you make of it and uh, what you do with it. So over to you. I'm really looking forward to seeing what you come up with. Happy remixing. Um, and I hope that in the future it influences how we display and interpret these paintings in the Polar Museum.